Hello, uh, thank you so much for joining us again. This is TV Kodi Rats and it's time to bring to you once again the program Business Rem. Today on Business Rem, we are discussing another topic um, and or maybe before I even go to that topic, we should um, remind you a few of the topics that we have treated in the past. You remember that um, the first um, the first topic was um, the first topic was um, introduction to entrepreneurship and um, we have also discussed topics like um, raising the capital you are interested in entrepreneurship you need to raise the capital we discussed the factors of production money capital entrepreneur and um, and land and uh, we have discussed um, sources of capital and on and so on and so forth so today on business realm we are discussing the topic taking off and nurturing your business now that you've raised the money that you need to run your business what do you have to do next and before we fully plunge into that, I want to um, call you um, to note that when you say you are running a business, the whole idea of running a business is keeping money. You want to, your, your ultimate goal is to have financial freedom you don't want to be a needy you don't want to be a beggar you want to be self-reliant you want to be self-sufficient you want to be able to pick your bills you want to be able to do things that you should do that is the main goal so now, money is at the center of everything. Now you remember that if you do not have money, as we discussed under raising the capital, if you do not have money, you can start a business. You can run a business, basically. And if you are running, if you claim to, that you are running a business and you are not making money, then you are not running a business. So the whole idea is having money, keeping money, and being self-sufficient, being useful to yourself and to others. And if you don't, if you want to achieve this, you want to remain useful to yourself, you want to remain useful to the society, then you need to guard your business as if the entirety of your life depends on your business. And actually, it does bring down the blind place uh, and, and, and actually the, your life depends on your business living a meaningful life depends on your means and your business is, um, is, is something that would help you achieve the meaningful life that you desire so your capital your business resources are not something that you play with now we go to the topic proper taking off and nurturing your business your money might have come from your spouse as love money it might have come from your mom your dad your aunt your nephew whoever it might have come as a loan from the bank and it might have come from your personal savings after hard labor or serving in other people's establishments 
you might be enjoying some grants or subsidy from the government but the bottom line is you now have the capital uh, that your business needs to take off so how do you take off properly and how do you nurture your business to success to a very great height to an enviable height to an emulable height how do you do that now that you have money how do you do that um one thing that i would like you to remember all of the time is that money money usually comes with temptation when you do not have money it's easy for you to cut your clothes your coat according to your to your clothes but when you have money from nowhere ideas will just be streaming in your head there is a <laughs> an outburst of ideas roaming in your brain and a lot of the glories of this world will begin to attract you you begin to to imagine the pleasure that spending that money or part of it on certain things will bring you you begin to imagine the pleasure that uh, spending on something will bring you money is temptation so when you have you have raised some money for business purposes discipline is needed you need to discipline yourself don't keep your money in your handbag or in your wardrobe or in your wallet or on the table or on the couch and begin to to fantasize about uh, the possibilities of pleasurable experiences that the money will bring if you just spend a part of it on some um, ephemera on some transient things no you want to swing into action as soon as possible when you have money and this money is meant for business you would and you should swing into action as soon as possible make sure you do not keep this money at home yes at home or in a place where it is easily accessible keep your business money your business capital in the bank and withdraw this money in tranches that you need from time to time withdraw the money in bits for instance you have i i don't want to mention any amount because your business capital may be two million naira and like i told you last week it may be one thousand naira for a business capital of one thousand naira you don't even need to keep it to bank just don't go to silifa alamala swing into action you want to start coconut business go and buy the coconut and buy the sugar your mommy's pot will be available and if you have five million naira or ten million naira you want to start a shop you need some furniture you need some uh some props now the first phase is to pay the rent keep the money in the bank go to the bank collect what you need for the for the rent and for the agency fee go pay the rent pay the agent get your receipt now you want to tile the floor or you want to paint the walls take the tiler and the painter let them give you the estimates go to the bank withdraw what you need for the tiler and the painter do the painting and the tiling why the rest of the money is kept safe in your bank account after that is done the next phase may be to uh, build the furniture at the interior decor for your show depending on either you have a sitting space as an office or it's just a shop a one-room shop where you want to display your goods or a one-room office where you want to keep your bookshelf your chairs your uh, electronics modest electronics you know everybody needs that including your computers so now after the 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 rent has been paid the painting and the tiling have been done the next thing may be your furniture 
then get the estimate from the furniture maker and take what you need from the bank get the furniture done the next thing may be stocking if it is a good base goods based business you know then before now i said that you would have made some inquiries about where to get the things that you want to sell and or, or you already uh, uh in conversation with the suppliers either in china or dubai and there are plans that they are sending it to you or you want to travel down just make sure that you swing into action immediately i used to have a friend in those days an evil lady who would say ah, bola, money and person not they stay <laughs> money and person not they stay you know so don't just Keep money away and continue to tell yourself that you will start next month or start in two months time. Spend the money for what it is meant for. And what this one, in this case, it is meant to start your business. So keep your money in the bank and collect your money in tranches. That's number one. Now that you have money, how should you treat the money? How should you handle the money? And we have told you. Money usually comes with temptation. You need discipline. Swing into action as soon as possible. Keep the money in the bank and collect in the bits that you need for uh, for different tasks at different stages of setting up your business. Another thing that you need to note now that you are becoming a business owner is that you need to cut excess consumption even before you started business before this capital or business grant comes into the to the scene of your life there were things that you enjoyed there were things that you you have been consuming this is a time where you want to ask the question again whether some of these things are necessary or whether life depends on some of these things or whether life can run without some of these things so you need to cut excess consumption if you have been um, engaged or involved or you've been in the practice of excess consumption this is the time to cut it down this is the time to 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 reduce your to manage your consumption pattern and tell yourself uh, there is a need to distinguish between what is a necessity, what is a want, what is a need, what is necessity, what is luxury. Because you, if you are a business starter, a business owner who is just starting, it, the stage at which you are starting your business is not the stage, the stage to indulge yourself with luxurious consumption so you want to cut down excess consumption and how do you do that you avoid impulse buying that's what you call impulse buying the moment you cite the thing without considering the pros and the cons without a second thought on impulse just as it appears to you just as it, as it occurs to you, right here where you just dip your hand into a wallet and you buy it. There are things that you buy this way and you get home and you suffer what is called post-purchase regrets. You buy some things and you get home and you go, but why did I buy? I don't actually need this. So you need to avoid impulse buying to prevent post-purchase regrets. And apart from that, you need to concentrate on necessities basic things of life it's for some time you grow past this stage your business will be well established and just as your business grows you return gradually to the things that you enjoy uh, to the level that your business can can accommodate the expenses without jeopardizing the growth of the business necessities of life include food clothing shelter 
in those days, you know, your shoes, your belt, your hat, as if parts of your clothing. But if you have always been somebody who is label label crazy, you want to to set aside your label craze and just think of things that are functional. A belt is a belt. Shoes are shoes. Clothes are clothes. This is not a time to to want to show off labels, expensive labels like that. This is what I use. You only want functional, practical, functional, useful, necessary things so that every extra savings can go into nurturing your business so you need to avoid impulse buying you need to buy necessities only either or, or on impulse or not on impulse even when you are not buying on impulse you know i said you need to avoid impulse buying that is you don't just buy something as soon as it jumps at you no you think over it again and again you weigh all the sides you you consider the advantages of that thing you consider the benefit of that thing against the other things that the money could be used to do that's one but i'm now saying even when you are not buying on impulse even when you have thought about this thing over and over and over again and you see fit that you should buy it you ask yourself again is it necessary is it a necessity if it is not a necessity and you are a business starter you are a starter in business don't buy things that are not necessary because you need to ensure that there is a reserve all of the time real businessmen and women are alert to availability of opportunities and if you are the kind who just feel that the shop is set every other money that comes should be spent on frivolities when some opportunities come you can't take them because you have no reserve so you need to ensure that there is a reserve all of the time so that you can cash in on available opportunities from time to time don't forget this is tv kudirat and the program is business realm today on business realm we are discussing taking off and nurturing your business we have discussed about five topics in the past but today this is taking off and nurturing your business to the point we have discussed how to even raise the capital raising the capital for your business what the topic last week now we assume that you have raised your capital you have the money so how do you take off and nurture your business to greatness that is the topic today and under that we have told you that now that you have money discipline is very necessary and we have told you that you need to swing into action immediately you need to keep your money in the bank and withdraw the money in bids that you need for specific tasks at the appropriate time and so we also told you that you will need to cut excess consumption how do you excess consumption you avoid impulse buying you don't just jump to dip your hand into your wallet to bring out the money and buy anything the glories of this world will flash about and they would attract you and you you will be attracted to them if you lack discipline and you will end up buying them and we say when you practice impulse buying most people who practice impulse buying also suffer post purchase regrets because some of the things that you buy on impulse would end up being uh, something that you take home and you you wonder why did i buy this why did i buy you bought it because you didn't ask the necessary question whether it is necessary or not and we have said that you need to ensure that you have a reserve all of the time so that you can seize opportunities that would come at times that you least expect now 
still under taking off and nurturing your business we like to tell you that there is the need to practice the discipline of moderation you need to generally we have thought that you need discipline financial discipline you don't spend your money on stocks but there is also the discipline of moderation and this would affect all aspects of your life because if you don't practice the discipline of moderation you will distract yourself and distract others and others will distract you you don't need to show off forget about the labels when you when you have um, bought things that are that are raining you bought things that are in vogue and you tell us eh, excuse me madam or, or mister what's your price did you invent that thing you didn't invent it the, the, the man or the woman who invented that has done more for life than you a consumer who who whatever by whatever means you you, you made your money you are just oppressing people and you are just luring people into into um, the culture of consumerism which doesn't take our society to any greater height you didn't invent it so what's the what's the show off about even those who invent these things don't show them off they make money for themselves and contribute to the growth of the economy of their country so what's, what's, what's the showmanship about, please? So you need to be modest. You want you are starting a business and you want to grow in business and you want to become a successful entrepreneur. You need to be modest. You practice the discipline of moderation. Be modest with everything. Even with the way you spend your time. Excuse me. Three hours is precious to just sit down and talk away. Three, two hours is precious to just sit down and and talk about something that is <laughs> everything in life is somebody's business. But not everything in life is everybody's business. Everything in life will affect someone more than everyone. So you don't want to sit down for three hours and just talk away about something that affects someone and not you. I'll, I'll, three hours of 24 hours, don't forget out of the 24 hours, you need time to sleep, you need time to rest, you need time to think, you need time to, to focus on your... <laughs> really. So you need to practice modesty moderation in everything in the way you dress in the way you talk in the way you address people in the way you manage your time in the way you you manage your business in everything spend your resources on enduring things things that would endure things that would last that's what you should spend your money and all of your resources your time is part of your resources Spend your resources on enduring things. How can gossip? It? Because your time is out of your resources and you spend three hours just gossiping somebody. How can that be an enduring thing that will benefit anybody's life? Be modest in everything. Save more than ever before. Save and save again. Keep saving. Because opportunities would come. These opportunities may come in form of a special order, an order that is promising, that promises gains, that promises profits, and you don't have any reserve to respond to this order because you wanted to wear high profile labels like your friends and acquaintances, or just like anybody you just see on Facebook, you want to wear the things that they flaunt. <laughs> without you knowing the source of their own money then you would soon realize that uh, that's not the way it is 
in classical entrepreneurship like i said on the very first edition there are a lot many appearances of business today but what we discuss here is classical entrepreneurship where you don't make impact by show off you want to make impact with your goods and services not with your you want to create impression yeah you want to create impression with the quality of goods that you sell or the quality of service that you render not with your exceptionally long and painted nails not with your exceptionally long eyelashes i know there are businesses where all of these are needed to create impression but that's not basically we are discussing classical entrepreneurship and here what you need to create impression and enduring impact on life and society is the quality of goods that you offer the quality of service that you offer so you need to practice the discipline of moderation in every way to avoid distraction to avoid being distracted and to avoid distracting others now like i said you need to save more i keep saying that you need to save more you need to save more business needs money to grow you don't want to remain where you are this year by next year and you should always have short medium and long-term plans set deadlines set goals and deadlines you set goals and attach deadlines to these goals by the year 2021 this is the level i would want my business to be and if you want that dream to come to reality you want to actually see your business at that level at that time that you have said keep saving keep saving keep saving just keep saving even when you have special orders what is supposed to be your gain let it translate to stock don't just say, oh, I've got an order, it's 2 million naira, and the gain is 100,000 naira, and you just take the 100,000 naira to, <laughs> to the latest E3 in town with a few friends, and you blow it up. Then you are not growing. But if 80,000 naira of your gain on this order translates to stock, by that order and your labor on that order, you have grown your business uh with another eighty thousand naira let the twenty thousand naira or ten thousand naira be for pleasure or five thousand naira let it send ninety five thousand naira back to the business let five thousand because you don't know how how how, how soon does three sixty five days return so soon you need to pay rent again and mind you the if it's a rented apartment your landlord may just come up with a rent increase anytime Thing. There are vicissitudes of life that won't give you notice that they are coming and they'll come. So business people are great savers. You need to practice the save the skill to save. You need to learn it, imbibe it, and keep saving to grow your business and to attain to situations that you didn't even envisage, no matter how smart you are. There are situations that you will not envisage and that will crop up. So you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't save too much. You can never save too much as a business person. Now, this is still related to savings. You need to use your other skills. For instance, you have a supermarket. You have staff. You are paying rent. You pay taxes. And you want it to grow in the face of all of this. And you need to just keep saving and keep raising money with whatever you have. So, everybody has got some skills that we didn't go to learn in any school that we just pick up as we move through life or that we naturally discover in ourselves. So, at your spare time, you can use these skills to raise more money. For instance, you have a shop but you have a degree in teaching then you can teach online you don't even need to to leave your house these days to teach there are um, teaching apps that you can download and teach any subject that you know you are good at 
either one hour a week or two hours in a week or three hours in a week when the shop has closed and your workers have gone home do you know in your bedroom you can just pick your phone and and teach there are people individuals who want a teacher who will teach them english language and when everybody is asleep they don't know that you are still teaching english language to one old man <laughs> who may be in a, a, a very uh, distant place away from where you are so if you if you are a teacher you can still teach at your spare time moderately in a way that won't affect your main business and your health if you are talented to sing go ahead and sing you could sing uh, you can apart from teaching in the um, um, teaching any formal subject you can be a public speaker if you study something like uh, guidance counseling or you are just experienced in a certain field you have walked that path and you can show the light to others you can be a public speaker you can you can you can dish out content uh, on that uh, subject matter and let people know that it's your field and you know it and you can you can shine the light to others you you can counsel people you can run a counseling service um, at your you, you know counseling service uh, work with appointments so you you give people this is this other things that you want to practice to make more money are not something that you do are not things that you do with deadlines you do them at your spirit when it is convenient you do them on appointment so you could still counsel people uh you could even plan modest events you don't want to plan very large events because that's not the main thing that you do but you can plan small events 20 30 people uh small meetings small seminars you can you can still do all of that if you are a talented uh, you can if you can act you can act you can you can produce uh skits small videos and and uh, place them on youtube if you have the 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 number of followers and subscriptions that is required for youtube to pay you you'll be paid these are natural talents without uh, jeopardizing your own health so uh that would be it today on business realm we hope you come along with us because we return here next week with another topic on business realm on tv kudirat if you have joined us live thank you so much for joining us and if you come across this video later and you like what we are doing i'm super excited to have you follow or like the page thank you so much on behalf of my crew kyle day and diana my name is bola omotayo thank you we'll see you again and very 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 soon Bye for now.